Okay, so here's the final uh, part of this particular um, unit, and it describes the subgroup that uh, I was the lead of requirements and use case subgroup. <coughs> So we have a we have most of the some of the usual verbiage at the top about working with industry, academia, and government, and we're trying to find requirements. And the process of getting requirements was done by first getting use cases and extracting requirements from use cases. This, this is not the only way of getting requirements. But it's a way that is documentable. Because once you have a use case, which is sort of by definition real, and is documented, then if it has requirements, you know why you have that requirement. And if you don't meet that requirement, you know what you're going to lose. So we had gathered our 51 new cases. We found some requirements. Uh, one little minor little difficulty, which um, will be corrected, and uh, hopefully as the process moves on, is in some sense, those requirements should should drive the reference architecture. But the requirements really didn't finish until towards uh, the middle of September. And so they little really couldn't drive the technology, uh, the reference architecture. Uh, so the reference architecture, was, which should in some sense have followed the uh, Requirements process was done in parallel with the requirements process. That was the correct decision, but it has some consequences. Um, so, <coughs> at the time, this was a slide for essentially summarizing what we did on September 30th. At the time, we decided on September 30th, we agreed to actually our next step was to look at general patterns. Some of that uh, I've, I've already done. And will be presented in the next unit when we look at the uh, different different um, features of the use cases. Something which has not been done is to validate the requirements and reference architecture by implementing some of these patterns. And the, and the idea of the patterns is, and we actually have not actually implemented any patterns, so in some sense that is clearly still to do, is it is not realistic to develop, uh, to actually implement a, in a generic fashion, a real application, you need to find an app, an application paradigm or pattern, which you implement in, in generic fashion, which can be done relatively simply, and use that to evaluate the reference architecture. Uh, so a key part of the, um, that may be the major part of the whole use case of working group, but maybe it's only, it's only contribution to knowledge, was the development of a, of a one page word document which had which was a use case template it was one the empty template was one page the full the full, full templates can be many pages so this just defines what we collect for each use case the title the area where that uh, use case lives in the military or um, retail or Artificial intelligence, the people doing the um, building the uh, use case um, definition, which may or may not be the same people who actually execute it. The people involved, um, which will be the users of this use case, the developers of the use case, and the supporters of the use case. The goals of the use case, uh, find out fundamental scientific results. Description of the use case, how you got those scientific results. And then after these, these general rules, we come into some of the technical details. Um, and here was the discussion of how it's done today. What the compute system's like, what the storage is like, what the network is like, what the software is like. And then <coughs> we now have, that's the sort of the infrastructure, now we come to the actual big data itself. Where the data comes from, the size, the velocity, the variety is the three major Vs. And there's the, um, as well as uh, we also have the variability, the rate of change of the uh, data. Um, which is, So here we use variety to, to, men, to, to describe uh, how it, um, the different the number of types of data and the variability 
is uh, the change in the size and nature of the data. That's what he said is constant in time. Um, then we come to uh, veracity, which is the robustness and the semantics of the of the data. We have the visualization of the data, the quality. Um, quality uh, is um, and veracity address different issue, uh, different uh, aspects of uh, saying um, correctness uh, issues. One at the semantic level, and one at the actual um, data value level. Um, then we have the actual types of data, and uh, here we have pretty important field, the actual analytics, which uh, needs is being used or should be used. After these uh, description, we then have the um, um, data challenges. These are the sort of free field comments. Uh, anything uh, comments on the importance of mobile phones? We know mobile phones are growing in importance, in, at least in the real world. And the PCs are declining in use, and mobile phones are dramatically increasing. Although this lecture's been done on a PC, so still PCs have some value. And by PCs, I meant any laptop or desktop, this is a laptop. And then we have the security and privacy issues, which is cross-cutting, so we put it uh, outside the main details. Uh, <coughs> and then any comments they would have on the special features. And then at the end, some URLs and the final free field comment, which is rarely filled in. So we have 26 fields, and we have 51 uh, completed uh, surveys, which we will come to in the next unit. And they we divide them into these broad areas, government operation for, for the uh, 51. Eight of the 51 were commercial uh, use cases, three were defense, 10 were in healthcare and life sciences. Some of those in some sense are um, they might necessarily research applications, they could actually be operational applications in the healthcare industry. So there are some commercial things. Then we have a pretty exciting area, deep learning, where a lot of the progress has been made in analytics. And then social media analysis, those are two very hot areas which we join together. Then we have four, which I call the ecosystem for research, because they describe general features, cross-cutting use cases, you'll see what they what they are when we come to them, they're a bit of a grab bag, but when you have use cases need ecosystem. I mean, research and big data needs an ecosystem. Uh, then we have five in astronomy and physics, and ten in sort of earth, environmental, and polar science, and then one in energy. These numbers should not be taken seriously as to the importance of big data in certain areas. They just represent who filled in our um, in our form, and this was all done over roughly six weeks. Because we didn't really have the form till the middle of July. And then we want, then we started winding down the process at the end of August. Because we had to summarize it and things like that. So this is six weeks of intense activity to gather these, these use cases.